<coughs> a little closer up on it. Here's the control valve, which is actually backwards. But what's going to happen is our hydraulic hoses will come out here. Right off of this is going to be some stands. That's where the two cables will go. I'm going to take these handles off and make two more that just come up straight where the handle, the cable, will hook to it and do that. Just push and pull. It ain't got very much. So it'll hook up to here. The two tape cables will come, and I'll make another box that's just going to set here. The two two handles that are extremely long that come up here. That way I got a lot of movement with very little movement in the beam, but a lot of movements in the cable. So that's the reason it's mounted up backwards. This is mounted. I relocated this from here to there. So now if you look straight over, you see how our pivot down here is the same as this one. The arc angle is pretty much straight. I just got air holding the cylinder up. But I came and put some chains on here to stop the cover. See, I need to hook in here to the loop. <laughs> Add a little gusset here to keep this plate from wanting to vibrate or something. But anyway, it goes back, ties into this. Made that little pull handle. That's the foot for it. So when you're not using it, you set it on the ground. Our cutting wheel here, it's going to be about 11 inches off the center line of this down. But that keeps that from just resting on the ground. And I come in and put this thing here, this plate here, because when I got to uh, drill and tap, and I'll bolt a piece of plate that'll cover the guard, and it'll come way out over here and bolt back into right here. And that'll be what'll cover our uh, cutting wheel. And you see, I still haven't welded everything up. I've got it all mostly welded, but when I disassemble it, I'm going to take and re-weld what hasn't been welded and dress it all up. Got this little brace here, ties this to this, and back over here. My daughter just hollered at me. We got a few things from Granger. This should be the hydraulic fittings that hook here to our cylinders. And I've got a the hydraulic hose should be here tomorrow. But I'm probably going to have to weld just a ring to slide them through to keep them from messing up and getting tangled up in there. I didn't really want to cut these off for the trouble. I've got some eyelets on it in case I want to put a, a chain here. I thought about putting another eyelet right here. So if, it, if I'm carrying it through the woods and all the yanking and the banging, I could put a chain on it to help support it just for travels, moving it around and stuff. I don't know. But there it is. A buttload of work. But it's coming, coming together. This video was part two of the stump grinder. <clears throat> uh, since the last video, I got my hydraulic fittings and hoses all hooked up. I got those valves fixed up with my levers, like I discussed. There's Morse cable on here. Got that made. Little levers out of aluminum. And I got a chain on it supporting it just to keep it up off the ground. There's the stainless steel cover. Uh, that's the wheel simulator, just for the diameter of the wheel plus the teeth on it. Should be that diameter. I still have a bolt right here that I'm going to, have to cut the cover back so it'll flit up tight. <clears throat> but that should keep most of the debris. It's actually 18 gauge uh, stainless steel that I'd had. That we rolled and made it. Now, <clears throat> here's the levers. I guess I had a little bit too much time on my hands. But I machined these out of 6061 T6 aluminum. 
This is three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, done a little ball milling back there. I just made it where it all bolted together. Got these little hemispherical or Heinz joints, some people call them, rod ends. They go here. I got a roller bearing, sealed bearing in, inside of this cover. And these handles was just some raw stock aluminum uh, that a friend had had. He makes, works at a company that makes stove parts, refrigerators and stove. And these is actual aluminum handles on a side-by-side -side refrigerator. They had some that was bent or, or whatnot. So instead of throwing them in a dumpster, he brought them to me. So I turned them down, threaded it, stuck it in a lathe, threaded it back, just goofed off more or less, cut the center out, and then I got pretty bored about the ball handles on it. Didn't really know what to do or how to make it, but they move very silky. <clears throat> and when I sat on this, I was planning on mounting it just on the fender and let the cables do everything when the three-point hitch raises. Uh, set the top link right, it raises completely up just for transport. I'll uh, <clears throat> lift it to transport it, and then it'll, it'll go all right, then won't be in your way. But I got carried away on it. And we're fixing to have to hook it up to the tractor pressure and return line. <clears throat> this little tractor does not have a add-on hydraulic. Uh, for this so there's just no room there's so much stuff in there that's why I've done that this is the only implement that I have that requires hydraulics so that's just why I put the control valve right on the machine and uh, what's powering it <clears throat> is a Yanmar 1510 two-wheel drive a little small tractor uh, it's probably on the smaller end to be driving the stump grinder but that's why I made the stump grinder <clears throat> after looking at other people's and horsepower requirements to a lesser horsepower requirement and I kind of put all of those together and come up with my version of it <clears throat> just I've got two to three hundred stumps to grind it's not feasible stump grinding companies you're looking at three four thousand dollars to grind a stump when it's winter time, so we got the spring to get it done. <clears throat> so why not just gather up all the parts and make one? It's kind of a, an adventure anyway. But most of the parts come just right off eBay, whatever you can find cheap. A 45 horsepower gearbox, slip clutch, the drive shaft. <clears throat> the cylinders are two and a half inch bore, 18 inch stroke on the top, 20 on the bottom. The hoses, fittings and stuff like that, just spend time finding it and all the rest of it is just metal that I've had laying around uh, just just kind of stored up as you can see that the all of the stuff gets laid around <clears throat> but back to the tractor <clears throat> the wheel of these if anybody owns a little Yanmar they usually have rice paddy tires on them <clears throat> there's a big thing on like tractor by net and stuff that you can find about wheels for your Yanmar but I got all of this together, which is probably another video in itself. I'm real pleased with these R4 tires. Got rid of the rice paddy tires. As long as it's not really muddy, these are a whole lot better tracks. It doesn't tear your turf up. A lot more stable on heels. And for that conversion from your Yanmar, uh, you're probably, I've got mm, probably $800 in the tires having Hay Wheel Machine Company make the wheels for me and I painted them and put a counterweight in them and come off of a machine where I work, <clears throat> which worked out lovely. All I did was bore two holes and it slid it in there. It weighs 98 pounds, that cast iron. <clears throat> I've got liquid filled in the tire. Each tire is probably close to 350 pounds. I mean, this little tractor gets all kind of traction. So uh, <clears throat> that's where we are on the update of the stump grinder. I guess the next thing is to take the wheel, start doing all the machining to it. I've got a piece of three quarter inch plate that I've got to burn the circle out of. <clears throat> and 
let me get the here's the teeth they were bought off of eBay off a of Rayco stump grinder I had to resharpen them but I've got a lot more than I ever need for half as much as what they cost I just had to resharpen them and I still got to determine and make the wheel and all that it's been a pretty good project but I'm probably at <clears throat> close to 80 hours and <clears throat> what I have done here so I guess maybe the next video will actually be the wheel. I might show some part of making the wheel, the cutting the cutting wheel for it, the teeth and all. But uh, maybe by then I'll I'll do a photo. And if anybody would like to see some more about a Yanmar, just message me on it, and maybe I'll do a video about pricing and where to get stuff and what size these wheels are and all. But till then, have a good one.